Do you believe that everything happens for a reason? There's a reason that you clicked on this video. It's because you want to learn a new car trick. It's because you want to fool your friends. Or it's just because you want to trash me in the comments. For one reason or another, you clicked on this video. Now get ready for one of the biggest coincidences. All right, yo, so check this out. For those of you who are curious, these are the City of Mirror playing cards by TCC. What I really like about these playing cards, check it out, the case right here. I don't know what this material is called, but you can do that with it. And when you turn it from different angles, it turns white. It's like a pinkish purple, but when you turn it, it turns into like a whitish color. That's pretty cool. Anyway, they just launched on Kickstarter. I'll put the link to them in the description. You can go ahead and uh, check them out. But so here's how this card trick is going to work. Like any other card trick, we're gonna start, of course, by shuffling up the deck of playing cards. And when we feel like the shuffling is enough, then we'll stop. Even if it's a bit messy, um, that's fine. We all we all like messy. Great guy, I think. I never actually met him, but he, great guy. Uh, now this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put the spectator, I'm gonna put this deck right in front of the spectator. And for this trick, we're gonna use four spectators. I'm gonna ask spectator number one to give the deck a cut wherever they'd like. Then I'm gonna mark the spot where they cut to like this. Now, every time a deck is cut, it's cut to a different card in a normal deck of 52 cards. Every time the deck is cut, it's cut to a new card. So spectator number one cut to their card and that's the card that we're gonna be selecting. So check it out, we're gonna stop right here. That is spectator number one's card. Spectator number two is gonna pick their card slightly differently. I'm gonna hand them the deck. They're gonna deal cards as long as they want. Let's just say between 10 to 20 cards, otherwise it's gonna take forever. So let's just say that many cards they've dealt out. Now we wanna make sure that no one can touch the cards in this packet. So we're gonna take one of my rings, let's just say this one, and we're gonna put it on top of this packet. And now we know if anyone touches these cards, the ring will move, right? That seems logical enough. So here's how it's gonna happen. Now I'm gonna hand the deck over to spectator number three. They're gonna repeat the exact same process. Deal off as many cards as they want. Let's just say that many cards. Take any of my rings. Let's just say this one this time. Put it right on top. Again, this will verify that no one is gonna to touch this packet. And if they do end up touching the packet, well then we know that the packet has been messed with. And of course, spectator number four now is gonna do the exact same thing. Deal as many cards as they want. Let's just say they didn't even wanna deal with that many that many cards have been dealt. I'll take my last ring and I'll put it on. Now, spectator number one stopped and cut the deck wherever they wanted and they stopped at one card. That card ended up being a seven of clubs, right? So you can see that seven of clubs. I know the cards are kind of weirdly shaped. I kind of like them in a way, but they're a little difficult to see. So I'm gonna bring it up and you can see that the cards, uh, the card is a seven. Now, what are the chances you picked a seven? Seven is a really cool, mysterious, lucky, any, any kind of card any, anytime you ask someone to name a, name a card or name a number, they're usually gravitated towards the number seven for many weird different reasons, right? There, there's, there's seven wonders of the ancient world. There are seven deadly sins, there's seven virtues, seven days in a week, seven colors in the spectrum. Seven just has so much to do with life. Now you may think it's a pure coincidence picking the number seven, but what are the chances if we take a look in spectator number two's packet, they also stopped at a seven. I mean, that that's pretty impressive, right? We have seven of clubs, seven of hearts. Now, what are the chances that spectator number three also stopped at a seven? That'd be pretty impressive. Check it out. The seven of spades. Oh my God. The chances of this happening are astronomically low. And check it out. The last spectator, again, these all these people dealt as many cards as they wanted. And the last spectator also dealt to a seven. I'm telling you, maybe there's something special about seven after all. What up crew, it is Magic Monday, and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance, and captivate audiences. To give you some background on this effect, it's from the Card College series, volume one by Roberto Giopi, and it's known as Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, a modification of a trick taught in the book, Expert Card Technique. This trick does require you to know a couple of skills, but I'm gonna teach you a way to get around those skills for those of you who wanna go out and perform this now. So before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, grab your favorite deck of playing cards, and now let's do it. All right, yo, so welcome to the tutorial. Um, now for this trick, like I mentioned, there's an easy way to do it and there's uh, the way that I did it in my performance. I'm gonna cover the easy way first and then just talk about a bit of the substitutions that'll be done in the advanced version. So first things first, this trick does require a little bit of a setup, especially if you're performing it the easy way. You wanna take the four sevens and put them on top of the deck. So I here I have the seven of clubs, spades, hearts, and club, no, hold on. Diamond, spades, hearts, and clubs. Sorry, I am somewhat blind. 
you want to start with these four um, sevens and put them on top of the deck. When this trick starts, you take the deck out of the tuck case and you want to give the deck either some false shuffles or false cuts. And while you're in the process of doing this, you also want to move the top two sevens to the bottom of the deck. So here's how I'd recommend that you do this. So first you want to start by first uh, by giving the deck a riffle shuffle. So I split up the deck, make sure as I'm doing the riffle shuffle, I maintain the top four cards here, square everything up. So the four sevens are still on top. Now, if we're talking about how to do this in the easy method, I would do a double undercut. And, uh, and for my more advanced method, I'm gonna do a, um, an overhand shuffle, but I'll talk about that later in the video. Um, what I'm doing is I'm gonna peel off two cards in the back here. So I'm gonna count one, two cards with my thumb. And I'm gonna do a double undercut. So I take half of this entire packet, move it to the top above our break here that you can see. Then I take all the cards above this break or all the cards are below the break, move them to the top as well. What this ultimately did was it kept the top two seven, well, it kept the third and fourth seven on top, and it took the, uh, the first and second seven and moved it right to the bottom. And now we're ready to begin with our effect. And like I said, I'll talk about the advanced version a bit later. Now you uh, put the deck down on the table. Ideally, this would be great if done with at least four people. I think that would make it a lot more fun and engaging, just to show that everyone's picking the same card ultimately at the end. You have them give the deck a cut anywhere you want. So you can hold the deck in your hand, have the spectator pick up about half the deck, put that down on the table. And now you're gonna take the remaining cards in your hand, turn them sideways and put them down. This is what's known as the cross cut force. And it is, it, it is so good. Like I don't even know how else to describe it, but it works so effectively that ultimately what you're doing is you're putting the top half here and putting the bottom half on top of the top half. And what you wanna do now is at once you've done this, you wanna talk through it, causing a time delay between what the spectator sees and when you do the reveal. This kind of takes their mind off of what they're seeing and gets them to think about other things. So when they come back to what the, where the trick is happening, they're gonna forget what exactly happened here. All they're gonna remember, the deck was cut and a random card was selected. So you could do something um, like what I did in my performance where I, you know, where I said that every time a deck is cut, every time a deck is shuffled, there's always a new outcome. And uh, where you, wherever you cut to the deck, there's always gonna be a different card. And the card that you're gonna select is now going to be your personal lucky card, whatever you wanna call it. So now you lift up this packet that you had originally cross cut like this on top, take this original top card and give it to them. As far as they know, this is some random card that they selected, but of course it's in, uh, in reality, it's the seven of hearts and you can put it over here. Then you take the original top half, put it on top. If we look at the deck now, we have one seven on top and we have two sevens on the bottom. Then you hand this deck over to spectator number two. If you'd like, you could do another false shuffle, which I'd probably recommend just because something has happened with the deck and now you wanna cut it up again so that it's mixed up for the next person. You have them deal as many cards as they want. I don't go more than 20, so sometimes I say between one to 10 cards, sometimes I say, you know, 10 to 20, whatever, whatever kind of floats your boat at the time, they deal an X number of cards. Let's just say that many. And what this is ultimately doing is it's transferring the top card to the bottom card of this packet. As long as you're dealing the cards face down, one at a time, one on top of the other, you should be fine. Another way to kind of make this a bit more fun is you can tell the spectator start dealing cards. Maybe once they've gone like two, three cards deep, you could tell them that they can even mix up the order of the cards as they're dealing. So they can reverse the cards like this, throw piles of three, throw piles of two. Again, if that's if you wanna have a bit more fun with the spectator. Now in the original trick uh, where this happens, once the first pile or, so yeah, once the first pile itself has been dealt, then we go to the spectator. There's actually a box of matches and that box of matches is given to the spectator. Let's pretend this is a box of matches. That's given to the spectator. And the spectator is instructed to take out a match and put it on top of their pile. This causes some level of misdirection because you kind of need a little bit of misdirection with what's gonna happen next. So for me, since I have these rings on, I just tell them to take one of the rings, they take one, put it on top, and I could tell them to center the ring, make sure you wanna put it in a position so if it does move, you'll recognize where the ring has moved to. As they're doing this, you can do another double, um, not a double, sorry. You can do another um, undercut where you're, now this time you're gonna peel the bottom card because you wanna move this bottom seven to the top. You break off this top packet, cut that in half like this, swing cut it over to the other hand, bring it to the bottom. You align it up with that one card break you have. You take all the cards below the break, bring that to the top. 
And again, well, that's done. You have moved the seven to the top and now there's also one seven on the bottom. And again, they're gonna deal however much they wanna deal. Same instructions as before. For me, I have them take a ring. Whatever object you wanna use, if you wanna use like a piece of paper or you wanna use, I don't know, another card or uh, a deck tuck case like this, whatever you wanna use, go for it. And the last, uh, the last seven that you're gonna bring up, there's many ways to do it. In my performance, I use the overhand shuffle and just shuffled until there's one card left. But you can again do the double undercut where you're doing something like this, moving that card right to the top. You hand the deck over to the last spectator, they deal. And a lot of the selling on this effect is done uh, while you're talking. Performance is key when performing um, like this trick. So what you want to kind of talk about is once you reveal the spectator's first card and they see it's a seven, then you can kind of talk about like the mystery behind a seven or the luck behind a seven or, or um, I don't know, I don't even know what else I said. But the, the general feeling that people get when they see the number seven, people are drawn towards the number seven. You could talk about the seven ancient wonders of the world, the seven deadly sins, the seven virtues, seven days in a week, seven colors in a spectrum, which is all that I mentioned that I actually memorized just to make this video. But you can talk about any of those things. And so you see, you can tell them that you, th you may think that you picked seven on complete coincidence, but what are the chances that the spectator number two also picked a seven? You ask them to remove the ring or remove whatever object that you have, reveal a seven. The next one is removed, you reveal another seven. The next ring is removed and you reveal another seven. As you're doing this, kind of build up your performance a little bit at a time. That gives it a greater impact every time a seven is revealed. All right, let's say you want to take it one step further because you're an advanced magician. You start off by handing the deck over to the spectator, having them shuffle it up as much as they'd like. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna go through the deck, you're gonna go through the deck face up towards you, and you're gonna do um, the Roadrunner call. And the way that the Roadrunner call works is you're gonna take, every time you see a seven, you're gonna call that card right to the back. And if you wanna learn the tutorial on how to do the call, I'll put the link to it on the, uh, on the screen. I also have a video for it on my Patreon, you can go check that out. But all you're pretty much gonna do is once you see a seven, you're gonna call it to the back like this. Make sure it's not noticeable like up here or down here. Make sure you try to pull it as straight as you possibly can and you see another seven here, pull that to the back, and you're gonna do this until you see all four sevens. So right now I have two, where are the other ones? There's another one, and the last seven is, oh, well, last seven's pretty much close to the top as well. But what that pretty much does is you go through the deck, you'll see all four sevens are here. Um, now, like I was showing in my performance, or sorry, while I was showing in the simpler tutorial, um, I did a double undercut or I did an undercut to control these top two cards to the bottom. What I actually like to do, or what I did in my performance when you're watching that, is I did an overhand shuffle. So the way that it'll work is you go into the overhand shuffling position like this, and you're gonna peel off two cards. One, two. Then you're gonna throw over a chunk of cards, and you're gonna in-jog these cards like this. Take your thumb, in-jog these cards, and shuffle the rest of the cards over. Now that you've done this, you have two sevens on the bottom, and you've in-jogged the original top portion of cards. You're gonna push down and forward. You're gonna use these two fingers here of your non-dominant hand, your uh, ring finger, pinky finger, to hold on to the bottom couple of cards as you pull the rest of these cards out like this, right? And you continue shuffling until you get to your break that you can see here. Generally, the break isn't this big, but just to make it easier for tutorial purposes, I made it a little larger. Shuffle that up. Once you get to this packet, you throw it on top. Now you have the two aces, not two aces, I'm just used to saying aces, two sevens on top and two sevens on the bottom. Again, really cool way to control cards. Then do the same thing with a cross cut force. I'm not gonna walk you through that again. One card is selected, then you do the, the counting. That's, that's done. Let's say one ring is off and on that packet. Now, uh, again, I, I try to avoid the undercut because I just think it's a weird looking move. And, and of course, no offense to anyone that uses it. I just think it, it looks strange when you do that move. So what I'm doing here now is I'm doing another overhand shuffle. Again, overhand shuffle is a fairly natural looking shuffle. A lot, of, a lot of people know how to do it. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. As I come and get into this position, I count off two cards from the bottom, like this, one, two, using my thumb. And of course, those two cards are the two sevens. I shuffle and I bring those two cards to the top, like so. And then uh, either you can do one uh, undercut or you can do what I did in the beginning where I peel off one card this time, 
throw a packet of cards over, in jog, shuffle the rest over, down and forward, keep that bottom card where it is, do another shuffle. Now you have one seven on top and you have one seven on the bottom. Again, this will require a good amount of practicing. So I did have a masterclass for the overhand shuffle. I'll put the link on the screen. You can go ahead and check it out. Then again, same exact thing is repeated, whatever it is, bada bing, bada boom. And then lastly, for the last seven, I shuffle, overhand shuffle until there's one card remaining in my hand, peel off that one card, hand it over to the last spectator, and they deal their cards out, put the last ring on top, and do the reveal in the exact same way. We got a seven, we got a seven, we got a seven, if we can square all this up, and we have our last seven. There you have the seventh son of sev seven son, seven son. You know what, you already know what this trick is called, so just don't ask me to say it again. This trick relies a bit more on misdirection than most of the other card tricks on the channel. And some of you may be uncomfortable with that, but I guarantee you getting away with misdirection is one of the greatest feelings. If you wanna check out another fun card trick to amaze your friends, click on this video right here, and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. Love you guys, have a great day ahead, and I hope to see you in the next video. Deck drop.